We remember and honor our ancestors, praise and respect our elders. We remember and honor our ancestors, praise and respect our elders. We don't know what tomorrow will bring, but we pray for peace. everyone and welcome to the Sojourner Truth Presbyterian Virtual Sunday Worship Service. Today is a special day. This is the first Sunday of Epiphany and also it is a Sojourner Truth Presbyterian Church, Presbyterian Women, Human Trafficking Awareness Sunday. I am Minister Phyllis Gibbons commission lay pastor here at Sojourner Truth Presbyterian Church and also the moderator of the Sojourner Truth Presbyterian Women. And on behalf of myself, our beloved pastor, Reverend Kamal Hassan, and the lovely congregation here at Sojourner Truth, we thank you for joining us. I do have to say that although the Building is closed again to, due to the surge in the Omicron virus. God's church is not closed. We are continuing with our virtual service. We were continuing with Bible study, with session meetings, with Sunday school, and even with the food pantry and all matters of the church. It may be not in the church. We will keep you updated on the re reopening of the church. You were asked to wear orange today as this is the color designated for human trafficking awareness by the Presbyterian Church USA. Now, before we close in COVID in January, 2020, I'd like to share a picture of the church service we had. You see all you beautiful people in orange. That's when we were in service. And we are going to continue that today, even though we are on Zoom. The Presbyterian women have been supporting the awareness, prevention, and eradication of human trafficking for seven years now. And we will continue on this mission as God leads us to do so. Today, we have two guest speakers, Vanessa Russell, founder of Love Never Fails, who will be bringing the word of God to us, and Sable Horton, also from Love Never Fails. You may remember Vanessa as she spoke so poignantly last year of her work with human trafficking. And you may remember Sable as she was a praise dancer when I gave my testimony after my accident three years ago. You will be hearing more from them at their time. So let's give them a warm Jesus hand praise as we welcome them to our service this morning. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this is first Sunday of Epiphany and Human Trafficking Awareness Sunday. I just wanna take a moment to say a few words about Epiphany and Human Trafficking Awareness. And I wanna thank my sister, Charlene Stephanie Henderson for collaborating on this with me. Epiphany is a celebration of God's manifestation to the world in Jesus Christ. 
Jesus came as the light of the world. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. And it never will. 2,000 years ago under a crisp black sky and the light of the moon, God sent a baby in a manger. He was birthed among animals, yet royalty adorned him. Shepherds and magi, wise men from Asia, Europe, and Africa followed a star that rose in the east to present their gifts of frankincense and kings and beasts and shepherds bowed low for God's light had come into the world. Jesus Christ was not any light, but a light prepared from the beginning of time, the light that would shine in every human, that we would behold our God. But the darkness too was in the beginning. When God threw Satan as a king of Tyre, condemned Satan for his trafficking of souls. In Ezekiel 28, the word of the Lord, it begins by saying the word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, say this to the ruler of Tyre. This is what the sovereign Lord says. And as he goes on to say, by your wisdom and understanding, you have gained wealth for yourself and amassed gold and silver in your treasuries. By your great skill of in trading, you have increased your wealth. Because of your wealth, your heart has grown proud. Meet the original trafficker, Satan. And Satan is still out here trafficking our youth, men and women today. He knows what is in the heart of humans, that heart of love. And because he knows this, he steals God's treasures, his children, girls, boys, men and women. He steals the treasures of the souls that are silver and gold. As God's light shone and became the guiding light to the Magi and the wise men as they were walking in darkness to see the newborn king. God's light is also leading us to dark places, the dark places of human trafficking. And we are called to follow the light, Jesus Christ, and the others to him. Get our hearts and our minds and our souls ready for this service. You will hear the introit and then the intercessory prayer by Elder Epicy Tokeson. <laughs>
Thank you, Justin, for that beautiful music. Again, I am Elder Eposi Westbrook Tokesin. Please join me for the intercessory prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you because you said, my children come to me with hope where there is turmoil and love where there is hate. We come to you, O oh Lord, bringing to you all of the problems that we are encountering. You have shown the light to Sojourner Truth Presbyterian Church to shine the light to the world in Richmond, San Pablo, Contra Costa County, um, California, and everywhere, oh Lord. As Presbyterian women, you have called us to go where there is distress, where our children are trafficked, to shine the light because these things are done in the darkness. Oh Lord, we ask you for continued strength that as we have been commissioned as the Matthew 25 church, that we will not close our eyes to the injuries done to our people, but that we will go with courage wherever you ask us to go. In Christ Jesus' name, your son, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Epicy. And now you will hear our next musical selection, and then we will have a call to worship by Elder Connie Bridgewater and Deacon Melva Spigener. Sojourner Truth. And please join me in the call to worship. Where is the one whose rule we accept? Who is the God? Who is the one whom we have come to worship? God, whose dominion is over all creation, is with us. We worship God, who acts in human history. What are the signs of God's presence? When shall we know we have found the truth we seek? God is revealed in the commonplace, even in a child. When we share our gifts, God is made known. Why do we weary, why do weary travelers gather to worship? How will, we, how will our prayers and praise make a difference? The grace of God has come to us once more. We will let God change us in our daily routines. Thank you, thank you. And now we have come to the time of a contemporary words. You'll be hearing two words today. One will be from our very own Deacon Hannah Head, and the other word will be from Sable Horton of Love Never Fails. Now, we, before we go into the contemporary word, I just wanna say a little bit about Sable. Sable Horton is a Bay Area native, <clears throat> entrepreneur, speaker, writer, dancer, performer, activist, a social change agent, youth leader, and a modern day abolitionist. She was born in Vallejo, California. However, she has lived and was raised all across the Bay. Sable grew up in a single parent household and found out very early that due to various circumstances, she was going to have a challenging life. She used to believe that she wasn't going to amount to nothing more than the challenges that surrounded her and others like her. In response to all that Sable experienced and was witnessing, including abuse, trafficking, and other forms of trauma, Sable launched Shades of Beauty to go into the very cracks 
she has ensnared in. She was ensnared in to pull others out. Shades of Beauty is a nonprofit organization that exists to inspire all girls and women to be the best versions of themselves they can be. This by helping girls and women develop in several areas, love, identity, community, education, service, creativity, and leadership. Since launching the beauty programs, Sable has been educating hundreds of students and community members about issues such as human trafficking, mental health, identity and self-esteem, and much, much more. In 2019, Sable started partnering with Love Never Fails to share her story with the world. In 2020, she was a Bay Area Inspire Award recipient. And in 2021, Sable was chosen as a 2021 modern day abolitionist for outstanding advocacy in the area of anti-human trafficking. She is young and excited to grow more as she continues to serve the community. Let's give a warm welcome for Deacon Hannah, Hare, Hannah Head, which we'll hear first, and then for Sable Horton. Good morning, my siblings. So generous, kind, loving, compassionate, honest, supportive, respectful. That's a lie if we're talking about human trafficking. Those words would not be what it is. It's a monster that operates a lot like an octopus because it, it has a very strong financial engine. It's very well organized. So it's got this nice strong body universally. It has its tentacles into the labor market, into politics, and it's run by immoral and greedy, selfish agents. In fact, a little known fact is the victims often are very familiar with those who are facilitating this horrible act upon them. It's corrupt and it's illegal, which is why politically the operators would love to get laws in place that allows it to function right in plain sight. The absolute nerve of doing this with God's creation, as we heard Sister Phyllis remind us earlier, God did not create us to be treated like this. This was not the plan. So the Presbyterian women, of course, we are part of Presbyterian USA. So if you are a member of the Presbyterian church, you are a Presbyterian woman. We understand because we are grounded in our faith. We are fueled by un unceasing prayer, Bible study, worship, and our actions. We understand there's a mission and there's a purpose. And we're going to use the tools that Christ gave us to attack aggressively this mission we are on a journey for peace and justice within our borders and outside of our borders. We are going to develop and have developed partnerships that broaden our awareness and others' awareness of how when you are interconnected, God's mission can go local and it can go national and it is in global action right now. There's an inclusiveness in caring for your community. You feel it, you see it. We have partnered with Love Never Fails. You're gonna hear a lot about Love Never Fails and it, it is so appropriately named. But to get to participate in that monthly prayer coalition, 
you kick off your month. Prayer is very powerful, very powerful. As ambassadors, we feel honored to partner with them. We don't stop there. We reach out to our seniors, the Nevin Plaza Project. We prepare food and packets, sanitary items, personal items, so that they don't feel excluded and left alone. You know how it feels to be a senior up in age? Nobody's coming around. Your money is limited. You get a little hungry. Just imagine what that's like when we live in a world where nobody cares, but not the Sojourner Truth Food Pantry. Those partnerships have set us into action. And Sister Epicy has pulled us into the world beyond our borders with the orphanage in Cameroon. Marion Mojoko Foundation founded this orphanage and it responds to our clothes that come. At the end of the year, it was so wonderful to sit down and do all of these Christmas cards to those children. I just tried to imagine their face when they got those wonderful greetings for the holidays. I just thought to myself, what can I say that lets them know somebody that doesn't even know me beyond my borders loves me? That's what generosity and kind and loving, compassionate, honesty, that's what it's about. And if you're just wondering, Presbyterian women, how can I jump on board? I want to do something. We offer you the red carpet. Give us a call. Come on down. <laughs> we will put you to work. If you want to do something about this horrible activity, there are national hotlines now that educate you and tell you more about this octopus that needs to be chopped up, cut off, and laid to rest and retired. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, as mentioned earlier, my name is Sable. I'm 26 years old, and I work at Love Never Fails as a youth residential counselor. Um, outside of that, I'm also a business owner, a nonprofit leader, a community activist, praise dancer, youth leader, and just a bunch of other random things. But this morning, I think it's also important to mention that I'm also a survivor of human trafficking. As some of you guys may know, human trafficking is the illegal trade of human beings for the purposes of forced labor and or commercial sex. Every single year, millions of people are trafficked worldwide. Traffickers use force, fraud, or coercion to lure their victims and force them into exploitation. Traffickers, also called exploiters, tend to feed off of people's vulnerabilities. Love Never Fails is an organization that works to restore, educate, and protect survivors of human trafficking and their communities. On this beautiful day that the Lord has made, and as we come together to bring awareness to the issue of human trafficking, I want to quickly share something that was on my heart. We know that the exploitation of people is something that tears apart souls and leaves deep wounds. While I was ensnared in the darkness of exploitation myself, a lie was implanted in my mind. This lie told me that I was not valuable, that I was not loved, and that I needed to hide from everyone, even the Lord. This lie is also in the minds of a lot of others who are currently being exploited. This lie tells us that we are invisible and unlovable. And honestly, that lie has also probably tried to make its way into some of your minds as well. But how many of us know that the Lord has sent his son to defeat these lies, right? We are called to be the salt and light of the earth, but even as people of light, people who are believers, we are sometimes fearful at the thought of complete vulnerability, and we fall subject to the lies that I mentioned earlier. We sometimes believe that if anyone knows all the mistakes that we've made, the 30 things we've done, the pain we feel, the trauma we've been through, and so on, that we'll be rejected. So instead, we hide in shame. Jeremiah 1.5 states, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. 
I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. The first part of this scripture is a beautiful reminder that when the Lord creates a person, it is from a plan that he has developed long before we were even formed in our mother's womb. It's a reminder that the Lord knows what he is doing. And he knows every single thing about you. He knew what mistakes you would make. He knew what trauma or pain you would go through. And he even knew every single thing that you were struggled with. You quite literally are fully known. The Lord knows your thoughts before you think them. He knows what move you're gonna make. And he knows everything you need before you even know that you need it. And none of that changes how he feels about you. How amazing is that? I think that is such a beautiful thing. When I'm out on the street ministering or engaging with girls and women as they're being sold, something I love to tell them is that the Lord sees them and is fighting for them. And it shocks them every time. Human trafficking attacks the soul in a way that makes you feel like you're dirty, unclean, and unworthy. It makes you feel like you're beyond help. And the truth is that we are never too far gone. And the Lord will always come for us no matter how dark, dangerous, or deep the situation or circumstance is. I'm going to end, but I want to share one last scripture. And that's Romans 8, 37 through 39. And it says, no, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. So as a closing reminder, our value is not determined by the mistakes we make, the bad things that were done to us, the things we've said, and so on. Because of Jesus, we don't have to hide from those things either. The truth is that we are fully known and fully loved. And because of Jesus, we also have the opportunity to be fully free. Thank you guys. Thank you, Hannah and Slavo for those empowering, encouraging, truthful words. Just thank you, my heart is just so open right now. So let us continue our worship service. You will be hearing our next musical selection, and then you will be hearing Elder Connie Bridgewater and Deacon Melva Spigner with the call to confession, prayer to confession, and assurance of forgiveness. God bless you all. God bless you, Sable and Anna. God bless love never fails. Please join me in the call to confession. As the glory of God shines around us once more, our mistakes and unfaithfulness are revealed in ways we cannot escape. We come to recognize that we have failed to act with God to show forth Christ to the world. We have resisted communion with God, who seeks to expand the narrow circles of interest and attention that constrict us. May our confession express an earnest desire for change. Please join me in the prayer of confession. God of all people, we cry out to you from the prisons of our own self-concern. We have sought to create you in our own image, to serve people like us. We shrink from your righteousness and justice. We participate in acts of oppression and violence, sometimes actively, often through neglect. Forgive us, we pray and lead us out of the shadows. Help us to hear your prophets, to see the signs of your activity among us, to feel the pain of sisters and brothers who need our compassion, not our judgment. Amen. Assurance of forgiveness. The grace of God comes to us. The stars by which God would lead us will shine. The mysteries of God are yet revealed. We are forgiven. We are accepted. We are empowered to minister. Let the light of God shine in you and the joy of serving fill you with a bright radiance. 
Thank you, thank you. And now I have a couple of announcements. So as I stated earlier, the church building is now closed and we will keep you updated on the reopening. As a reminder, the annual congregational meeting will be on January 30th. January 30th will be our congregational meeting. This will be a virtual Zoom worship service with the congregational meeting immediately following. Any annual report should be received by January 16th. If you have not done so, please submit your reports to Lillian by January 16th. Another announcement, all seniors and high school juniors, if you are interested in seeking and receiving an Emily Sheehy Scott, please contract, contact Kendra Tremell. The STPC Food Pantry need volunteers are needed to help this Friday, January 14th, from one to three, no, this Friday, January 14th, for food distribution on Saturday, January 15th. If you are interested in out with the food pantry, as I say, the building is still closed. They are giving food out to people through drive-through, not having any minimal contact with the people. So if you'd like to help and support the food pantry, please contact Sandra Tremell. Also, when the church does open, we are seeking new doorkeepers of the church, ushers. If you're interested in this, please contact Jonathan Mobley. And now a word from Elder Cora Brown. Good morning. Um, <clears throat> On Friday, I met with uh, some of you that came and got your t-shirts, but we still have some t-shirts left. And I'd like for you to contact me to let me know how we can get your t-shirts to you. We have a few double X left, a few mediums and a few large left, but very few. So if you're interested in any other t-shirts, um, those are the sizes that we have left. Um, <clears throat> it's really coming down to the wire in terms of this momentous occasion. And um, I'm hoping by this time that you have received your um, reservation for uh, to come and pick out um, what you want on your menu. And <clears throat> you should send that back to the church or you can contact um, Sandra Richardson uh, if you have any questions about it. She's also the person that is over that. And I'm hoping that by this time, you've also received um, your letters in terms of uh, submitting ads or going out trying to get ads for our souvenir book. And Connie Bridgewater is the person that is over that. So we continue to uh, move forward in this um, event. It, it's going to be one event that you will, will remember. It is, we have a dynamite speaker that's coming out of Seattle, Washington. And um, so if you miss this, you will miss a, a great thing in your life. <laughs> you will really truly miss it. So I thank you and I just like to read the names of everybody on the committee so that all of us are available to you for anything, but those are the ones that I named are the ones that's over that particular group. We have Lynette Humde, Sandra Richardson, Connie Bridgewater, Hannah Head, Beverly Smith Miller, Gloria Gideon, and myself. And I don't, I don't, did I leave out anybody? No, yes, okay. Thank you guys, don't worry. They say, be happy. Thank you, Ms. Cora, for that announcement. And now we will hear the sermonic selection. But before that, I would like to introduce you to our speaker for the, of the day. I can't say that I'm going to tell you a little bit about her because ain't nothing little bit about her. 
<laughs> Everything she's doing is large and in charge. Yes, I am talking about my faithful friend, Vanessa Russell. All right. Vanessa Russell has developed children in the area of dance teaching, teaching hundreds, three to 25, lyrical, flags, hip hop, mime, since the year 2000. In 2010, one of her 15 year old dance students was sold into human trafficking. Although this person was eventually located and is now being restored, Vanessa has encountered many others like her student who were just born women, men and children trapped in modern day slavery. Her response was to launch Love Never Fails, a nonprofit dedicated to the restoration, education and protection of those individuals involved or at risk of becoming involved in domestic human trafficking. Love Never Fails has educated thousands of children and community members on the issue of human trafficking, opened forums that provide long-term safe housing and restorative services for over 176 women, men, and children who have been impacted by human trafficking. Vanessa also launched an IT academy, connecting underserved community members with financially sustainable careers. Vanessa believes that the issue of human trafficking can be solved through love expressed in prayer, safe housing, mentoring, job training, outreach, and education. Vanessa also worked 23 years in the IT industry and retired from Cisco Systems in January 2019 to lead Love Never Fails full time. Her professional hope is to inspire and motivate people to develop business and to develop themselves. She and her husband, Pastor Timothy Russell, are blessed to have seven children and four grandchildren. Wow, where does she find time for others? In her heart, love never fails. Vanessa graduated from University of San Francisco with a BS in Information Systems Management. She is a sought out keynote speaker, a professor of computer science and information systems for Peralta Colleges. She's a vested worldwide professional speaker and published author of Fight for Love workbook. She is a recipient of the 2013 Jefferson Award, the 2015 Jesse Curtis Homeless Advocacy in Action Award, the 2015 Hayward Heart Award, the 2015 Top 20 Dynamic Women-Owned Nonprofits, the 2017 Ujima Catholic Community Service Award, the 2017 Cisco Hero Award, the 2017 Discovery Investigation and People Magazine Everyday Hero Award, the 2018 CRN Women of the Channel, the 2018 Cisco Bridge Award, the 2019 Luke 14 Award, the 2019 BBVA Momentum Accelerator Program finalist, and a recipient of the 2020 Modern Day Abolitionist of the Year Award. Love Never Fails is a 2020 Classy Awards finalist, excuse me, a 2021 Classy Awards finalist and a 2021 East Bay Innovations finalist. Wow, like I said, there's nothing little about everything she does. So now we will hear the sermonic song, and then the next voice you hear will be that of Vanessa Rubble. So right now, everyone, let's give her a warm welcome and hand praise. Amen, amen, amen. And now for the sermonic. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank Woo. you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we give you thanks, Lord. We give you thanks that we have you, God, that we have you in this time, in this season, when there is so much that is being spoken over us of abandonment, of being set, of being alone, being forgotten, Lord, with COVID, with human trafficking, with homelessness, with hunger, with the things that are plaguing us, with being elderly and people not coming, as was mentioned earlier. God, I thank you that you have given us your spirit that dwells dwells within us, that comforts us, that keeps us, that surrounds us with your love, God. I thank you that you're speaking over your church, Sojourner Truth Presbyterian Church, God. You're saying to each and every one that is here and to all of us, to the nation, to the world, I am here, I am here, I am here, and I love you. I have not abandoned you. I have not forsaken you, for you are my beloved. I thank you so much, God, for what you are doing right now, the light that you're shining into each and every home that is represented here, God. I pray that you would fill us even more. You would give us even more insight, more vision, more power, more, more wisdom, more strength. God, this journey is, ta is tiring at times. It is difficult. God, sometimes we become weary, but God, you are with us. So, Lord, we give you thanks. We give you praise because you are worthy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. And I thank you, God, for the music selections today, which are helping us to draw near to the hearts and the feelings and the experiences, Lord, of the people that are out there, that are in the rain, in the cold, in tents, that are living in cardboard boxes, that are selling, having to sell themselves or being so, God, to survive. My God, my God, Lord, arrest us today, Lord. Get a hold of our hearts. Help us, equip us, Lord, for this work, Lord. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. I just, oh my gosh, Ooh, I'm so full. I'm so full. I'm just so grateful to be here with all of you. And, and, um, and I just, I just want to thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm so very humbled to be in partnership with uh, the beautiful leaders that uh, constantly come to our, uh, to our monthly prayer meetings. Uh, we have on the first, uh, first Monday of every month as part of our church coalition. We, we are so grateful to always have representation from this body that prays over us. And as I say, every month, I say, just from being prayed over for 45 minutes, I feel like I went to the spa for a full day. And how many of you know that we need some self-care when we're out there hitting the streets and, 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 and you know, prayer for me being prayed for and prayed over is my self-care. It's, it's, it, it soothes my soul. It strengthens my bones. It gives me uh, strength to go on another day. And so I just thank you so much for your prayers. Uh, today, we are going to be in the book of Psalm, Psalm 139. Um, I want to just, uh, of course, I want to acknowledge my husband and thank him. He is uh, organizing our service uh, in Hayward while I'm over here. And uh, we just had our children on the youth service on a separate Zoom. So we are all over the place just making sure we get what we need from the Lord because uh, we don't want to miss what he has for us. And, and, and today, what the Lord has really put on my heart is that we should all come away with uh, knowing firstly that we here, that we are deeply loved, that we are deeply loved. And also that those that are out there in the streets are just as deeply loved as we are. We are one, we are brothers and sisters. And we are deeply loved by our God. Now, I want to talk to you about the mindset of a, a survivor. And I love that Sable came in and, I, you know, it was almost as if we connected on our messages, but we didn't. Um, but it, it's because our hearts are joined in this. And, and I've seen it over and over again. And I, too, have had my own traumas 
having grown up uh, experiencing foster care, homelessness, uh, a sexual abuse, domestic violence, uh, hunger, um, you know, just, just a variety of physical abuse. I've experienced a, a lot of things. And those things, how many of you know that those things begin to speak to you and they begin to tell you that you're not worth anything? They, they, you know, in, in the clinical world, and, and, and Sister Hannah knows about this, that, that there's even a physiological science that shows that, that the neural pathways that, that, that are built inside of your brain speak to you and say, this is the way that you should go. This is your lot in life. This is who you are. You are a foster child. You are an exploited woman, exploited man. You are a uh, someone who deserves to be beaten, deserves to be sold, deserves to be spit on, choked, raped. These are the experiences of some of the people that we're working with, as in fact, most of the people that we're working with. This is small potatoes for the ones that, that most of the people that I, 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 I've, I've, I've had the opportunity to minister to. A few years back, I had the opportunity to rescue a 12 year old. Her mother had come to me, she had been adopted and she was dark complected and her mother was light complected. And she adopted another child who was also light complected. And she had, a, had gotten this idea from somewhere, the pit of hell, that the color of her skin made her less valuable in that home. And someone came in and told her, I'm gonna love you the way you need to be loved. I love your dark skin and I will never abandon you. you how many of you know that the enemy will come in and he'll infiltrate the words of the Lord? Huh? The Lord says, I will never leave you or forsake you. So here comes Satan taking the words and making them his own, only polluting them with his agenda and with his ways and with his thoughts, reinforcing those ridges in your brain, reinforcing, uh, perpetuating the generational curse on your family. And here, here comes Satan speaking through somebody, I will never leave you or forsake you. Only those words only come, they have strings attached. You see, when the Lord says, I will never leave you. Or forsake you, he's, he means it. It's not a quid pro quo. It's not for what you can do for him or for what you can do for her. No, it's because it's not for anybody's, it's not for God's use of you. It's because he loves you that he will never leave you or forsake you. He loves you in all of your challenges. <laughs> and we're going to read about that in Psalm 139 in just a second. All of your thoughts, he knows. I said, all of them, Lord, can I keep a few of my thoughts and set them aside? Because sometimes, how many of you know, now lately, I have been getting into some Facebook reels. Anybody getting into Facebook reels? And some of that stuff is jumping in there. And in some of it is really funny. It's really funny. But I noticed a few of the things, even when I switch off of them quickly, they're getting in my spirit. In my, there's words and there's thoughts and there's, there's seeds that the enemy is trying to plant up in my spirit to start shifting me in a way to where I'm starting to think a little more carnal or I'm, I'm starting to think a little more worldly. I'm starting to uh, think about how I need to be as a woman, not by the world standard, by the Lord's standards, but by the world standards. Am I pretty enough? Do I have the right outfit? Am I making enough money? Am I, am I showing up in this right way and that right way? When God said, focus on me, Delight yourself in me and I will give you the desires of your heart. God tells us that my ways are not your ways and my thoughts are not your thoughts. And that he even says, it, there's a way that seems right to a man, but in the end, it leads to death. There are things that God is speaking over us today that are counterculture 
they're counter to what the world is telling us. And because this, this, this voice is so loud, it is pulling our children into human trafficking. It is pulling our children into being them thinking that they're only as good as they look or what they can provide to the person that so-called wants them. So we're going to look today at Psalm 139, and we're going to study it a little bit. And what I want you to know is, even if you are on here, perhaps you have been trafficked, perhaps you had been abused, perhaps you have been a survivor of domestic violence. No matter what you've been through, no matter what has happened to you, you are loved. And I mean loved deeply, away down on the inside. Your in, inner parts were made by the Lord himself. He fashioned you and shaped you into his image with such care because he loves you and don't let anybody come in between you and that don't let anybody come in between you and the love that the Lord has for you in the book of Psalm 139 the word of God reads you have searched me Lord and you know me you know when I sit and when I rise you perceive my thoughts from afar you discern my going out and my lying down, you are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence, Lord? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you and the night will shine like the day for his darkness is as light to you for you created my inmost being you knit me together in my mother's womb huh. i praise you because i am fearfully and wonderfully made your works are wonderful i know that full well my frame it was not hidden from you when I made it, when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, God. How vast is the sum of them. Were I to count them, they were would outnumber the grains of sand. Huh. And when I awake, I am still with you. I'm going to stop there. I love this. I love this. I love the word of God. There's nothing like it and there's no one like him. There can be imposters all day, but there's nothing that can break the chain of the enemy over your life like the word of God. Recently, there was a whole agenda in the human trafficking space saying we need to remove chains, the imagery of chains from when we talk about human trafficking and when we do videos and when we do pictures. They said, take chains out. It's not realistic. People are not really being chained to their beds and to their, their chairs. And there's a whole group of people that are really getting riled up about this. And I, you know, first of all, I thought, man, we have so many more things that we need to be working on rather than whether we use chains or not in our imagery. But that being said, it was clear to me that the people that were arguing this point didn't understand the battlefield of the mind, the battlefield that a survivor goes through to really receive Psalm 139, to really know that God hasn't left you. God hasn't forgotten you. There's nowhere you can go. He searched you and he knows you. 
He, he knows when you rise. He knows your thoughts. There's nothing you're thinking that he hasn't realized. He's not going to get surprised by your challenges. He's not going to get, su sin doesn't surprise the Lord. In fact, he brought a solution forward to address it. So for me, it, the chains properly represents the mindset and the, and the challenges because they're so big at times, we don't know how to break them free. We don't know how to speak and declare things over ourselves to say, I am the head and not the tail. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. I'm precious in the Lord's sight. He has searched me and he knows me. He, has, he, he knows when I sit and when I rise, I want to to get to this place. And this is something that, that Sable and I have talked about. This is something that I talk about with other women that, that want to know the Lord more is let, let us begin to pray these things over ourselves and declare these things over ourselves because yes, you know, we have medicine. Yes, we have counseling, but it is so powerful when we can pull down any thought that exalts itself above the name of Jesus and subject it to the word of God and say, no devil, you you are a liar. The Lord knows me and he has fashioned me. He has said, I am precious in insight. And, and as in fact, he said that he has created me in my inmost being and knit me together in my mother's womb. Wow, I get an image when I see that knit, when I hear about that knit me together of the Lord sewing. And I don't know about you. I don't know how to sew, you guys. So I'm I'm I, I'm not very domestic. I, I've just started cooking, um, and I know I have. You know, it's a blended family. We have seven children. My husband and I raised four of them together, and three of them are older. But you know, I did do some cooking, but real basic stuff. Lately, I've been getting a little bit more in, in, in elaborate, but I have not gotten to the sewing part. But when you think about the weaving and the sewing, think about your skin, think about your hair, think about the time the Lord took on you, weaving and sewing you together, knitting you. Now, think about that child that's on that street. That's God's daughter. That's his child. He, he put his hands on her. He put her together. He breathed life into her. He said, I have a plan and a purpose over you and it's to prosper you and not to harm you, to give you a hope and a future. He spoke that over that baby that's out there. I was talking earlier about a 12 year old. Her mother had called me and I still remember she called me. Her mother worked for probation. So I want you to know that it doesn't, don't, don't make the assumption that it's just from families that, you know, where the parents aren't working or whatever. It's happening all over the place to everybody's kids. Why? Because there's so much accessibility with social media, with the internet. And then if your child is having a bad day, that's all it takes. One bad day where it's so, she puts or he puts on social media, I'm having a bad day or I don't feel good about myself and somebody's willing to come in and validate them and tell them, you know, tickle their ears and tell them what they want to hear. And then next thing you know, it's like, hey, well, come meet me over here. And next thing you know, um, there, there's a lot of strategies that exploiters use to break people in. They rape them. They, they shame them. They take pictures of them. They blackmail them. They, they tell them, I'll hurt your family if you don't do this and you don't do that. These are the strategies that they're using to, to, to recruit and to, to keep people ensnared in the life. And then after a while, the, the, you know, the, the, the child begins to believe the words that are being said. It's called trauma bonding or brainwashing or Stockholm syndrome. These things are the things that keep people bound. And I, oftentimes I hear uh, people go, well, why don't they just leave? The chains, the chains, the chains in the mind. When I keep saying to you, you're not anything. You're not worth anything. Or you're never going to be anything without me. When I speak things over you that have been spoken over you through your family or through your generations, it reinforces a, a way of thinking in a way, a behavior that you've always known. 
And see, so we have to come against that, but it's going to take some effort in all the body guys, because how are they going to get that message if we don't go? How are they going to know that they're worth anything if we don't go? Uh, the 12 year old that I'm speaking of, someone got a hold of her. They lied to her. They made her uh, feel like nobody else understands you, only me. And they got her out there. They got her out there. She was from San Leandro. They got her out in Oakland and LA and all these different places. And they started selling her 12, okay? Hotels, booking dates with people online. Got her out on the street corner in the middle of the night. She spent her 13th birthday out there on International Boulevard. I still remember the day that we rescued her. We had to get some people involved to actually grab her. We had to, it was a coordinated effort with the police, with some community members, with a lot of different people. We got her into a mental hospital. There were all these laws. We couldn't keep her for a certain period of time. Couldn't get her into a program. There were all these rules. There was all this stuff. And I just began to pray. And I just prayed. And I stayed in, in, her, in her hospital room in front of it. And I prayed. 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 And I promise you, it, she should not have been able to get into this program. But God saw fit to get her into a program out of state. And I literally flew her there with her mom that night. That night, we got on a plane and we flew her to that program. And, and because of that, I believe her life was saved. I believe her life was saved because of that. Because being 12 and 13 out there, you're getting beaten up, you're getting raped, you're getting all kinds of horrible things are happening to you. And she's doing much better now. But to, to think about her being out there, just imagine for a moment if you have a granddaughter or a daughter or a son or a grandson who's that age, to put them out on the corner, put them out there at two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning. What are the thoughts they're thinking about themselves? Somebody's willing to drive by and buy me? Buy me? Somebody knows I'm a kid? They see that I'm flat chested. They see that I'm, I'm, I'm a child. They still buy me. What does this world come to? And it, 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 it's heartbreaking to a person because I don't think a child really believes people will do this kind of stuff to them. And so there's a rude awakening about the evil that exists. And they may even say, I don't want to do it. And the people might say, I don't care. And then you're dealing with the exploiters. You're dealing with other people that are jealous of you because there's a lot of fighting on the street. There are a lot of competing between the people that are being sold. It's just a horrific scene. And so I say to you, as we think about these words from Psalm 139, I believe, especially on this one verse, it says, it says Psalm 139, 5, it says, you hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. How many of you want to lay your hands upon some of these babies? <laughs> Sometimes I want to do it in the other way, but <laughs> uh, you, 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 you got to hem them in. One of you has to be on one side, and one has to be on the other side. We got to work together. We got to be on one accord in our prayers, in our stance, in our physical space, in every, every way. We've got to wrap ourselves around with the power and the strength of the Lord. It's not by my power or by my might. It's by his, by his spirit I go. 
And I have seen, I remember another young lady, 14 years old, um, her mom told me she, she's never coming out of this. She's indoctrinated. She didn't got be beaten up. She's, she's had horrible experiences. She will never come out of this. I said, okay, okay, I got it. She said, I don't know what it's going to take. She said, we got to find her. We got to force her to go somewhere. We got, I, I'm so afraid she's going to come up dead. She was just distraught. And uh, one day the Lord, she came home to get I think I lost you all. I'm going to keep going. Um, I was saying, and ooh, the devil is a liar. So I'm going to, I was saying that God will give you a word from your, from his heart to, from his mouth and his heart to the heart of, of, of the people that um, he intends it for, and it will break any neural pathways, any things, you know, anything that anybody is saying can't be done, can't, is impossible. Nothing is impossible with God. And so I just believe that if we would ham in the children, that if, 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 if Rochelle, if you would go and be on one side, Melba, you get on the other side, Lynette, you get on the other side, Kendra, you on the other side, we're all going to be able to box them in, not box them in to scare them or traumatize them, love them. Love them into the, the kingdom. Here, let me offer you something to eat. Here, let me offer you a word of prayer. Here, let me offer you some counseling. Here, let me offer you a word of encouragement. I have different things. Each one of us has beautiful gifts and things to offer. Maybe you know how to make a beautiful hat or some gloves because it's cold outside. Maybe you know how to make cookies. Maybe you know how to make a good meal meal like I, I I was hearing about my sister I'm trying to look for her here um who who does the food pantry you know we all have a, a posse it, it, all of you have a beautiful gifts that the Lord has given to you and I'm so proud and humbled to know that in this body you are putting your gifts to work in the community and saying, I'm not going to just sit on my gifts. I'm not going to just sit back and chill. I'm going to bring forth my gifts because I know that there is a child out there, that there is an adult out there that doesn't want to be there and they don't know how they found themselves there, but they, they, they need to have a touch from the living God. And so God, I just I, I'm just overwhelmed with love and, and, and humility that, that we get to do this together and that, 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 that the Lord is speaking to my heart, always saying, you're not alone, Vanessa, you're with Sojourner Truth Presbyterian Church, your sister's there, your brother's there, we are carrying the burden together and, um, and, 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 and his yoke is easy and his burden is light, it is light by comparison, especially to what the folks are experiencing, what we have to go through to make a meal and to be out there is nothing compared to the burden that they're carrying. So I just, I thank you all uh, for, yes, the unity. I thank you all. I want to just say a prayer and then I will give it back to uh, Minister Phyllis and Again, I just, I give, I give the Lord praise. Lord, I just thank you for what you are doing. Uh, despite uh, the interruption in the middle of the message, Lord, I thank you. God, I believe you've given forth your, your, your word, which is that you accept us as we are. You accept us and you have hidden us in times where we were in darkness. You've hidden us. You've hidden uh, the things that, would attempt to kill us, Lord. You've removed them, Lord. You've strengthened us in times of need, and you've sent people to hem us in. One bookend, one of one bookend of love and one bookend of acceptance, God. And you've strengthened us for the work that needs to be done in the streets to 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 go out and and, and be present with your children and with your your people that don't want to be there, Lord. I thank you in advance for what you're going to do with this body, with each and every one that is here that says, "I will go." Send me uh, that each gift would 
be activated, Lord, for your purpose. And God, I pray right now that no one would, would feel overwhelmed. Instead, they would feel empowered, God, to bring forth what they can bring. Because with many, there is much that we can accomplish, Lord, in you. And so, Lord, I thank you in advance. I give you praise for this time. In Jesus' name, amen. And I'll hand it back to you, Minister Phyllis. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Vanessa Russell. I can say there's nothing little about her. Hallelujah. All the stuff that she got going on inside of her, we just praise God and just thank God for her ministry. Oh, at this time, this is a time that we invite people to God's kingdom and discipleship. If there is something that you heard today, if there is a message that touched your heart, if there is a song that was played that spoke to you, Jesus is calling you. He said, come on. Come on, you're not on this battlefield alone. This is the love zone. And we here as a journey to are here to walk with you, work with you, be with you, hem you in on all sides to make sure that you get that love, that, that deep, deep love that God has embedded in you. And maybe you're too scared to get out. Come on and walk with us. If you do not have a church home and you're looking for a church home, if something moved your spirit that you want to come to Sojourner Truth, or maybe you do have a church home and maybe you're looking for maybe a little bit more, maybe something a little bit different. We're inviting you to come join us here at Sojourner Truth, Presbyterian Church. And the way to do that is you can send an email to our pastor, Pastor Reverend Kamal Hassan at teach elder. One word, teach elder at gmail.com. And in the subject line, put membership. Now, there's another way that you can respond to God's word, and that is to give, give, give something back that what you were given today. Give something back that God has given you. Give something, maybe a little bit of your time, your talent, your treasures. Because although the church is closed, we, we still need money to operate. Now, there are several ways that you could give. One way to give is to go on the Sojourner Truth website at sojournertruthpchurch.org and hit the donate button. Another way you could give is to go on your app called Givelify, and you could give there. If you give on Givelify, the money will go into the church general account. And if you're a shopaholic or the pandemic has just put you in a space, you want to just continue to buy things, go to Amazon Smile. And there, whenever you buy something, the portion will be given back to Sojourner Truth Presbyterian Church. Another way you could give is to write a check. Write a check and send it to Sojourner Truth Presbyterian Church at 2621 Shane Drive in Richmond, California, 9406. And I urge you, if you want to give to the auxiliaries of Presbyterian women, the choir, the ushers, the deacons, the food pantry, I urge you to write a check and put on the checks of Journey Truth Presbyterian Church and in the subject line put the auxiliary where you want your money to be donated. You could put that on the envelope too. Sojourner Truth Food Pantry, Sojourner Truth Presbyterian Women, Sojourner Truth Deacons. Because the money that the Presbyterian women get, we continue to support. Love never fails. We continue to to help the children in Cameroon. We continue to give what we can, clothes, time, money, whatever it takes to help our young people, our siblings, those who are out there on the streets who feel that they have no love. We use these funds to help, help this organization. 
and to help all children who are in need. And another way, if you just want to stop by the church, although it is closed, you can't drop off your check. Please give back to God just a little bit of what he has given you. At this time, you will now, we will now hear the doxology as sung by Deacon Darlene. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God, all creatures here below. Praise God above ye heavenly hosts. Creator Christ. And Holy Ghost. Amen. And now for the offertory prayer by Elder Epicy Tuckerson. Let us pray. O oh Lord, our God of ages, the God who named our ancestor, Sojourner Truth, to be the beacon of light for everyone she came across with courage and boldness. We trust in you almighty God, to give us the resources that we need for your church to continue in the work that you have commissioned us to do. We know that there are some who are sick and shut in and cannot give. There are those who are mourning. There are those who who are infirmed, they are in the hospitals, they are sick. We ask you, O oh Lord, to go and visit every one of us and give them the courage, knowing that we are praying for them. And even if those who do not have infirmities, physical infirmities, we've just heard about, the, the abduction of our children, both the girls and the boys, for human trafficking, we ask you, O oh Lord, to continue to give us the resolve to attack these institutions that make us, that leave us frail. We ask you to continue to give us the resources as you've done, even in hard times such as this. We know that we'll continue to have what you've given us to do. In Christ Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. And now for our closing hymn, and then the commission and blessing. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, till victory is won. Till victory is won with these human trafficking victims. Till victory is won against the pre predators of human trafficking. Until victory is won when God has stepped down and we all are set free from all the chains. Praise the Lord. And now... It is time for the commission and blessing. Where are the shadow places needing light? Who needs the good news you have found here? God will brighten our homes, our work, our play. When the gospel rules, our shadows disappear.
What joys have you discovered to share with others? When will you present the gifts you have to offer? It is a joy to be alive and to worship God. In Christ, we will find ways to use our gifts. Why do you go forth to minister in Christ's name? How will others know the grace of God through you? We have been empowered by God to do God's work. We cannot keep the light from shining through us. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you all. At this moment, I just want to I just want to thank God for just these last seven years to continue leading me, leading me and, 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 and just being on this path to awareness of human trafficking, to eradicate, to prevent it, leading me to find speakers and our Presbyterian women who are always there helping and, and, and out there when, when we need and everything, for leading me to the songs that were played today, to leading me to the love that I feel right now. I just thank God for each and every one of you here. I thank God for Vanessa Russell. I just, whoo, just give her all type of praise for everything she does. And Sabo, yes, for your walk, for your being a survivor, for you coming out for hand to hand, for giving the contemporary word for Epicy, Connie and Melba, all those who participated today, for Darlene Langston, for her beautiful voice, for Justin, who is always there, telling us to mute and unmute <laughs> and making this service just a wonderful service. And right now I'd like to give a special thank you and hello to my two sister-in-laws, Dondrea, Dondrea Leo from McDonald, Atlanta, Atlanta, Georgia, and from Dion Bolden, who is in Slidell, Louisiana. I see they are on today. Thank you sisters for joining me. Thank you, everyone. Please continue to walk in the light of the Lord. Continue to hear the cries of the children who are being abused and trafficked and learn how to listen to God and answer with your prayers, your thoughts, donations, clothing, whatever it takes. Let this service just open your heart and inspire you to continue to do for God's beloved. I thank each and every one of you for being here. God bless you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. I love you. Amen.